You know what? I think there might be something in the trunk. Batteries! So I brought my new toy to town today and boy did it work perfectly. I diagnosed maybe six batteries with bad cells and one or two which just wouldn't take a charge. But these three guys seemed excellent despite these two having a bit of deformation on the sides. And I had a look inside the caps and they seem to be quite sulfated. But if we do a discharge test... Hello, go away please, sorry you're not the star. If we do a discharge test, you can see it's right around 12 point. You don't need to either camera boy. It's right around 12 and a half volts according to this thing, which is a bit higher than reality. If we charge it down, it drops a bit. But if we charge it, it's using all the current it can get. And it's basically when you charge it, you want it to move as little as possible, and this is not moving much. So this battery is eating charge like crazy. And the same goes for all three of these. This one is uh, a sealed battery, which kind of makes me not want to take it, but it looked good on the meter, performed pretty much as, as well as the big boy, so I gave it a shot, it didn't cost me anything. So, now I've just got to try and get these guys out of the car and cleaned up and then into the shop and get them charged. Hmm, I wonder why my sock turns green when you put sulfuric acid on it. Very strange indeed. Anyway, I've cleaned out the inside of the caps of these things, that's why I've got a little bit of acid on my sock. And they seem to be in fairly good order, I've of course looked into all the caps. Only one cell has uh, catastrophically too little water. The other ones seem to have a fair amount of sulfate, but no, it's not alarming. It's not like huge white chunks of crap floating around. So there's a decent chance these guys will do better than my other ones. I can't really find any kind of good date code on them. They don't have a date written on them like the 180 amp hour batteries I brought home last time, but uh, they have part of the serial number says 08, 1308, so maybe that's week 13 in 2008, but it could be anything really. I know that uh, Vata didn't use this design in 2007, but somewhere around there they moved from the white batteries to the black ones, so they are newer than the other ones, that's pretty much all I can tell really. Anyway, I've got to get some water into that open cell there and then I'm just gonna go ahead and recharge them and maybe wash my hands. As for this thing, well I'm just gonna go and go ahead and put this on the charger really. It's sealed entirely so there's not really anything I can do about it other than try and charge it, try and cycle it, see what it's got. And now we're charging at about 20 amps in total. That meter reads a bit too high. 13.35 volts and rising. These batteries are probably not gonna wanna take too much charge right off the get-go. I just wanna get some 
juice into them they were at about 12.2 volts so I can fill them up properly with water well granted 12.2 volts is about 50 to 70 percent charge around there so I could probably fill them up with water right now but I'm gonna let them charge just for a little bit in order to get an idea about how, what the condition is because they are sulfated I know that it can be seen quite easily in the cells I don't know Maybe I can catch it on camera since these are black. So it's going to auto expose quite a bit more than with white ones. Now that's about the best shot I can get. You can see some grey stuff in, stuff in there. That's just for plates, but that white, crusty stuff, that's the sulfate. That's what we don't want to see. I can get the focus just right. I have to do manual everything as far as this camera goes. But yeah, that, that's what he. Ah, you can see quite well up there in the top left corner. Sulfate all over this place, but it could be a lot worse. Ah, sitting in the sun. Watching your batteries charge. 14.063 volts. A big cup of Raymond. <sighs> Is there anything more you could ask out of life, really? Hey, waiter. There's a fly in my soup. I know, I do have to admit. But I'm curious as to what the purpose of an external fill level is on a battery you can't bloody well see through. Did they just reuse the moulding for the old ones or what? What? Why? What's the purpose? Uh, we've been charging for maybe 3 hours or so, at around 20 amps total still got a long way to go, which is a good sign and just a little tip, if you ever want to charge batteries in parallel it's a good idea unless you have very good jumpers to hook the positive side of a charger to one battery, jump that to the other and the negative to the other battery and jump it to the first because else you'll get uh, quite a bit higher voltage in the battery that's got the charger plugs due to the voltage drop in this cable. And I had about 0.4 volts of difference between these because my jumper's so crap. But with this system I've got 14.29 in that one and 14.36 in that one. And dropping, which is quite significantly better just a good tip I'm gonna have to carry these down these stairs soon oh, here comes something fast those guys weren't doing 90 anyway I am not looking forward to carrying these things down the stairs. They're specified to weigh 56 kilos a piece, and at 66 or so, well, I'm not the right guy for the job, but I'm gonna have to do it. I did manage to get them out of the car, so I guess that's at least something. A oh, nice for the little 100 amp hour guy. Doing okay. It was pretty fully charged. Even when I picked it up, it had an OCV of maybe 12.6 or 12.62 or something around there. So, it's been charging too for a bit as long. Even a little longer perhaps than it's used. Up all the 7 or so amps this charger can give for a while and it's been dropping st steadily. So, I'll probably end up cycling this one first and seeing what it's got. I've built this uh, handy little 10 amp uh, current sink 
for doing just that because I got tired of my light bulb. And this thing has a precision of plus minus one percent or so. So it's pretty easy to calculate the capacity. You, granted, you don't have any control over the time it takes to discharge the battery, but you've got the constant current, so you can get a specification like for these two, it takes about 8 hours to discharge from at 10 amps, so at the 8 hour rate, we're at 80 amp hours a piece and that's a good enough spec for me, because 10 amps per battery is pretty realistic for what I'm going to be using them for the 20 hour rate isn't really all that uh, interesting to me although it's going to be a bit more if you discharge them slower so I'm pretty much looking at a worst case scenario number unless I'm looking at some really big battery that will take more than 20 hours to drain at 10 amps but to be honest I don't think I'm ever going to get my hands on one of those batteries Oh, and to any battery nut out there who's cringing at me and going, Oh God, man, why are you using starter batteries for your solar system? That's going to be horrible. And yes, I'm fully aware of that. And I, I should say, this is going to be a high maintenance system. system. I'm probably looking at replacing the batteries at least once a year, if not more often. And... Uh, Going for a system voltage of above 12 volts is tricky. Right now I've got uh, four matching uh, batteries, so to speak. These two and the guys indoors, which I could hook up for a 24 volt system. But uh, I'm planning on pretty much just throwing in every random battery I've got laying around. So a 12 volt system is where I'm going to start. And uh, we'll see what happens. I would like to go for a high voltage system, but for a 150 watt panel or so, which is what I'm going to be building, well, <laughs> it's really not too big of a deal to be at a low voltage side. If I ever build more panels, depending on how good building my first one goes, I might just try and do something about it. Well, I just took him off a charger. They've been sucking up 20, 25 amps quite happily for maybe four and a half, five hours now. But it's getting kind of late, the shadows are getting long, and uh, it's time to try and get these behemoths down this flight of stairs, and I am not looking forward to it. I have cleaned these stairs extensively to get maybe two kills of moss to prevent myself from slipping but I'm going to videotape this just in case I end up head first down these stairs with a 60 kilo lead acid battery on top because I wouldn't want to miss out in such a Great moment of mine. Well, these guys really are quite round in relation to the razor, <coughs> razor straight stair. It's quite round indeed. Not a good sign. <coughs> we'll see if we can make something happen. Oh shit! I think this one's leaking. It is leaking alright. Have to take care of that. It should be alright though, as long as you don't splash it around. Which is what I'm doing right now. And it's only leaking by the top seal. So no biggie. In we go. Oh, okay. 
what I can use to fix that leak. Or if I'll just <laughs> write a warning on it. Let's hope it doesn't leak as well. Hey, it's stamp with 1007 on here. Could the thrill be that old? Hope not. Yep, it's definitely wet in there. Thankfully the carry handle is attached to the actual can of a battery and not just the lid. I was worried it was just attached to the lid, which would have meant I'd have to make a new carry handle for it. But I might be able to keep using these ones. But I should come up with some way of actually sealing this leak. I just quickly marked it out there so I know there's something going on and to be careful but yeah we'll see what I do about it. I mean they're not supposed to be carried around too much. They're, it's not like we're in a moving vehicle. They do make these 180 amp hour batteries look pretty tiny though. You'd expect them to be double the capacity <laughs> by just looking at them. Even though it's just 40 more amp hours, one new. I'm pretty curious to find out how they're going to perform. If they're going to be better or worse than the 180 amp hour ones. Hmm, these have been abused in a different way. Salvation versus just general wear and tear. And the little guy is doing well for himself. Steadily dropping in current. Almost down to the rule of thumb 1% of the 20 hour capacity charge current. So this could be a decent one, but eh, no caps can't refill it. Gonna have to hope that it hasn't been all boiled away. And there we go, everything's set up to charge overnight. I was afraid I was going to run out of clamps, but <laughs> I've got every single battery clamp I own, so for all my jumper cables in use here. Floating two batteries and charging three, all at once. <laughs> We've got one charger there, charging that one, another one there. Charging that one, two charges there, or well, a lab power supply. Charging those two, well, floating them. Okay, this one was floating at maybe 0.35 earlier today. Glad to see it dropped. And finally, we have my old lab PSU giving the final topping to this guy. So. Tomorrow I'm probably going to do a load test on this one and uh, probably check the water level on this, these and depending on how long the load test on this one takes I might run a load test on one of those too. The thing about running load test is it takes a long time. It took, well, eight hours apiece for those two and it's, well the first cycle might be around that for these two, probably, if they're in good shape, it, if it could be considerably shorter if they're terrible, but I'm hoping not. And this one, well, five hours if it's really good, probably less than that. I'd wager it's gonna go for four. But we'll find that out tomorrow. I've been up for 24 hours now, <laughs> balancing on one leg. Round lead acid batteries, lots of hydrogen gas and stuff, very funny. Yeah, and I need to go to bed. So, I'll check in on these guys tomorrow. Okay, it's now the next day, I just slept for 16 hours and I just got down here, haven't even had my coffee yet, and I haven't looked at this before. And right away, we can see that the little guy, the 100 amp hour one, that's well, that charger is doing pretty well for himself, drawing about 100 milliamps. So, I guess we can turn that off. <coughs> I'm gonna have to load test it. But the real question is what these two are drawing. Charges are still warm. 
2.37, 2.45. That's a bit on the high side, but uh, for two 220 amp hour batteries, that's not all too bad. I guess <coughs> I could probably take them off the charger as they've been charging for. Well, maybe 20 hours in total. And uh, cycle them when, well, when I get this one cycled, since it's going to take a lot <laughs> less time probably. And then I'll just charge them up again and see if they draw less current when fully charged and if they get more capacity out of it. Well, it's been off the charger for a couple of minutes now, and this 100 amp hour guy really seems to be holding up well. 13.7 volts OCV. They usually drop down way lower than that. So, let's see how it fares with my 10 amp load. Oh, hang on, have to fetch my timer. That's better. So, let's see how it fares with my 10 amp load. Time is ticking. And we can see the initial current is just a little bit over 10 amps. And the voltage is... <laughs> it's still over 13 volts with a 10.07 amp load, which is fairly impressive. Wow! I'm very... surprised. I mean, the voltages this high are just to surface charge but it's got a lot of it it seems there we go, 40 seconds to drop below 13 volts and the current has stabilized these meters don't have enough precision to actually measure the current of this thing I have calibrated it with this one and uh, it uses usually 9.997 amps when it's got enough to temp and a little bit more when it's stone cold and it takes a few minutes for it to warm up but 9.97 that's bullshit <laughs> anyway these meters can't handle 10 amps continuously they get very hot so I'm gonna disconnect that Three minutes in and the voltage is starting to stabilize at a very respectable 12.529 volts. Oh, and there we're going up again. Wow. <laughs> this is a pretty good battery. Over I mean most of these big guys stabilize at 12 volts. This one's half a volt higher. Granted, it's probably a calcium battery, so it's going to have slightly high voltage, but that much higher is a pretty good sign. This battery could be in pretty decent condition. I, <laughs> Unless there's something weird going on that it wouldn't crank over a car or something, I wouldn't have thrown it away. Pretty weird. Glad I grabbed it. Actually, saw this battery the first time I was there, and when and I picked up those two, but I let it be since I didn't have any way of testing it really. I was afraid it had a bad cell or something that uh, was just a uh, very bad capacity. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty much fully charged back then and it was when I picked it up so I'm pretty glad I did. Well it's been draining till the next cup of coffee, which is about three and a half hours, and it's at over 12 volts still, so I'm pretty impressed with this little battery, we've pulled more than 30 amperes out of it, almost 35, and it's showing no signs of giving in, so <laughs> I was kind of pessimistically saying that it would probably last for maybe 5 hours, but we should be looking at more than that, well this thing just ke keeps on going, it's been at it for just over 6 hours now, so we've drawn 60 amp hours out of it at a rate of 10 amps. And that's reasonably impressive, even for a new 100 amp hour battery rated over a 20 hour period. Granted, they 
don't actually seem to specify the discharge rate of 100 amperes, but uh, the battery is uh, pretty much sized as a normal automotive starting battery, so I'd assume it's a 20 hour rating, which could be less for an old battery to give 60 plus amperes at the 10 ish hour time is pretty good. It's well, the 100 amp hour battery has been discharging at 10 amps for 8 hours now. And it's starting to get slightly low on the voltage side, but 8 hours, 80 amp hours in 8 hours out of a 100 amp hour battery and it's still going. I am very surprised and very happy I brought this battery home because it seems to be in extremely good condition. I can't fathom why they threw it away. And there we go. 85, 86 amp hours out of this puny little thing at a 8.5 hour rate. That is impressive. <laughs> wow. This thing at the 20 hour rate will probably do about a hundred really. So this seems to be a practically brand new battery. I can't for the life of me fathom why they throw it away. Unless it's got some weird thing going on where it won't be able to crank an engine or something like that, but internal resistance tends to track pretty linearly with capacity so I have no idea, that's highly unlikely. I bet if I shorted it I'd get quite some sparks. Anyway, for the capacity test, that'll be it. I said that'll be it. And we'll turn off the current sink. Now I'm gonna let the voltage stabilize, make a note of it, estimate the de depth of discharge and Rise it into my handy little table of used batteries. So very, very impressed. And the voltage is rising steadily, so it seems to have quite a bit more to give if I wanted to press it down into a really, really deep discharge, but I don't want to do that. And here is my handy little chart that I've made for my trash picked batteries. Or I'll just make note from where I get them, what state they were in, where I got them whatever additional info I can get and information about cycling them which I might do in the future once I've got the solar system up and running so I left a few more columns there and uh, here's the info I got on my little 100 amp hour mate 86 amp hour that's better than the better one of the 180 amp hour ones so I'm really happy about that. I I just can't believe they threw it out. What's wrong with them? Oh well, <laughs> all the better for me. Now I've just got to wait until the OCV has stabilised so I can make note of how deeply discharged it is. I've made this little chart about roughly the state of uh, charge versus uh, the open so circuit voltage and these values are lower than what you'll see mostly most around the internet and I've pulled that out of my arse but it's because so that I don't have to let the battery rest for hours and hours before checking the OCV because the OCV will rise slowly over maybe a day or so but uh, in the first 30 minutes or so following a discharge it will pretty much stabilize and then only rise very slowly so I've offset these numbers a bit uh, on the low side so I can just make a note in maybe half an hour or so and then put it on a charger so I don't have to wait forever. Yeah, and that'll be it. The next thing I'm going to do is have to cycle these big black ones but since this little guy took so long time I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to do one of them today. For all I know they could take over 20 hours to cycle but I don't fat.